Today on Wood Turning, we're going to be making a great paper towel holder. And by the way, I think you got something on the lens. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Now the paper towel holder is a really fun project and it's really useful so it's not like some of the stuff we make that just sits on the shelf. Uh, I've made it out of a hard maple which is a pretty wood and it really holds up well to being in the kitchen and you can see I have a polyurethane coat on there right now and let me show you how this thing breaks apart. First take off the little knob right here. It doesn't really hold the paper towel on but it gives a nice finish to the whole piece. Pull that off and so now we have the shaped inner stem and it is epoxied or glued into the base here so it won't ever move. Now over here, you see I have a hole and I have this stem right here. This is the ripper. So when you pull the paper towel off, this is what you pull against. Well, one of the things I hate, we have a paper towel holder from a store we bought. When you get down to where you have like this much of the roll left and you try to rip it off, it doesn't work real well. So I drilled a second hole here so you move that in once the paper towel holder or the paper towels get a little bit thinner. So that works out pretty good. Anyway, it's real simple. All you're going to be working with is a piece of kiln dried two inch thick hard maple. And so this is an eight inch disc. This is a uh, two inch by two inch by three inch piece of wood here. This is a one inch by one inch by eight inch. And then this is a two by two by 13 and a half inches. Now the measurements on that are important because you have to figure out how tall a piece of paper towel is. So after figuring out tenons and everything else, 13 and a half inches worked out right to just have this a little bit above the top of the paper towel. Now, the one thing we want to start off with is the base and how we're going to hold the base is with a worm screw. So we're going to come over here to the drill press and we're going to drill a 7 16th, 7 16, 7 16 inch hole into the wood here and it's only going to go an inch deep. So I've got the depth stop already set on the drill press here. And this is going to be the top. <laughs> I love that sound. This is going to be the top of the blank, and that hole will be hidden when we put the center in. Ow, that is a sharp bit. Ow. Band-aid time. First blood of the season. Brian, you want to kiss it for me? Yeah, a lot of help you are. My mama would have. Anyway, we're going to be using a worm screw to mount this on the lathe, and I've got my wide jaws on there, and we're going to take this. It just goes inside like so. And I'm going to use a speed ring here to shut this down quickly. And one thing is this can slide back and forth a little bit. So pull it out all the way because when you tighten this on here, it'll want to pull it out. And if you don't have that out all the way, it could slip during your turning and get loose. So we're going to lock it down. It says close. There we go. Real good on that. And now we just simply take this hole and we put it up against the screw. And you can see it's got really aggressive threads. And I have the wide jaws on here because they're going to touch a wider surface area, which gives me more support while I'm turning. It's kind of hard to see here. There we go. Now it's going. There we go. You see how it's grabbing on there. Now we can turn it by hand. It might look a little crooked, but it'll straighten out. I'm going to lock this in one time and go like that. I'm going to regret that later because taking it off is going to be a pain when that happens. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and bring up our tool rest right here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to round out this edge and make a nice circle. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You can use a lot of different tools to round out a blank like this. A bowl gouge is what you preferably want to use when you're doing ingrain like this. But I'm going to use an easy wood tool today, which has a square carbide tip on it, and it can do the same thing. Basically, you want to come across the grain and push this way. You don't want to be dead straight and push in on it. So we're going to start this up. I already made sure nothing was going to hit. Nice and secure on there. So now we're spinning. Now we're going to take the tool right here and we're going to come in from the side and just barely nibble at it. So we're coming across. You can see I'm taking off just little slivers of wood. I don't want to do it all at once. There we go. And I'm using the one that has the little bit of a curve to it. 
So that curve helps me only contact a small part of the tool at one time. Now if you take a nice light cut and only contact the tip like I'm doing on the edge there, whoops, and don't stick it in the wood like that, uh, you'll get a nice clean surface. And all we're going to do is get this round because then we're going to work on the end and do a couple of elements on that side. Now I've been working on making a flat surface on this end for just a minute. And we want it flat because this is going to be the bottom of the piece. And speaking of bottom, let me show you the bottom. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to create this indentation here. It goes in about eighth of an inch. And it's not only decorative, but it's functional because we're going to use the jaws to expand into this to clean up the top of the piece. You know, I wonder if Target's going to give me a residual or sue me for using their logo all the time. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that diameter is about, I think it's three and a half, three and a quarter inches. I know it, it is the diameter that my jaws can expand to. And I've got it right here because I cheated and took it off of there. So we're going to take our calipers here and I'm going to touch this to the wood right here. You can see I'm not matching up with that line yet. So we're going to come out a little bit further. There we go. We're good right there. So that's where I want to make the outer of that rim. Now when you're using a carbide cutter and you want to bring something down like that, just don't plunge it in. You can do this one of two ways, but the way I like is I do this. I bring it in from the side and make little grooves until I get some clearance here. And by clearance I mean I'm away from touching all this to the wood at one time. So I'm down just taking down the peaks. There we go. And you can see I'm right at center level. And now I'm just going to walk my way in by cutting that edge. Very handy. If you try doing this with a spindle gouge or something like that, it's a little problematic because trying to keep it perfectly flat is tough. And I'm actually using the squareness of the tool, the blade, to help me make this right. Now this is really cool. Look how quickly this is going. And we're coming right up to our mark right there. Now I want to grab one of my fun tools, which is the skew. And we're going to come in here and just make a slight angle in because this is going to fit into the dovetail that's on the outside of the jaws. So I'm just pushing that in like so. Do it one more time. And there we go. And as I reach it here, I'm going to touch and move the bottom like there. Now it's nice. Now, to make our uh, Target logo, <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, the Easy Wood Detail Tool, which I really like because it's a very stout tool makes beautiful little rings. There we go, like so. And somebody taught me this. And I thought that was really cool. I always do this and say, this is the easy one. The hard one is getting this one the right distance. Somebody wrote me and said, uh-uh. I do the inside one, and then I do the outside one. Now I just go into the middle. Duh. Wish I'd thought of that years ago. <laughs> Ew. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the outside shape and make our beads for the base. Okay, I've been over at the grinder for a minute and I've been working on a tool that you can make at home and it's really, really neat. It is called a three-point tool. And you can see there are three triangular edges on there and we'll use the wood as an example. You basically take this to your grinder and you grind like that. Well, let me back up a little bit. What are you grinding? Um, I've been given easy wood tools a lot of love today, but at the same time I use some Thompson lathe tools and I really like those too. And Doug Thompson sent me this piece of steel, or a couple of them, different sizes. And I'm like, what the heck is that for? I can't cut with it, it's round. And he said, you can make a point tool. And I, that's what a point tool looks like. See, you go in there and you make those triangles out of that. It's real simple, just straight grinds. Well, what does a point tool do? A point tool helps you when you're trying to make beads in different shapes. And so we're gonna make a bead on both ends of this. We're gonna make one here, we're gonna make one right here. And actually, the fun thing about when I'm out in the shop making a project, I do prototypes, right? And my first thought was, this is the prototype base, was that I was going to make a, hey, whoops, let's do it this way. I was going to make a large bead on the bottom and a small bead on the top. And I thought that looked great. Well, when I started making this one, I screwed up and got it backwards and made the large bead on top and the small on the bottom. And to tell you the truth, this looks a whole lot better. I like this. It's a better weight. It really is cool. So that's what we're going to do on here. We're going to make a small bead 
on this end and a large bead on this end. Let me get my glasses here and a pencil and we'll show you how this point tool works. I haven't been working with it a lot. Other experts out there who probably dance with this thing. So I'm going to show you how I use it the safest way I found because I got some catches with it when I started. And that way you can at least start safely and then expand out from there. But let's make a mark here. This is going to be the bottom, so that's our smaller bead. This is the top, we'll make that our larger bead right there. Now the point tool, you don't want to come up into the wood, especially on in grain. That tip will catch in a heartbeat. And believe me, when I said prototypes, I got more than one laying around here and there's a good reason for that. You also don't have this point up. You turn it to where you get the flat side up. So like you'd almost do with a skew, you want to just push it in, push it in, and look how that cuts really takes nice shavings off. It's kind of a scrape, but I'm trailing the tool. You can see that it's going down a little bit like that. You don't want to tip it up because that's when you'll get into trouble. So you can take it and you just kind of curve it around as you go. And you come here, I'm going to break this edge. You can see how that works. And the shavings is taking off. It's like it's snowing here. Isn't that cool? It's really nice. And I'm looking up at the top. I've almost got my bead shaped the way I want it. Now I'm going to take away some of this wood here to get out of the way so I can make a cleaner cut. They say you can do coves with these and I think you do it like this, but I haven't gotten that good at it yet, so I'm not going to make it that way. I'll make one my other way. I'm kind of looking around my camera here to see where I'm going. But anyway, push it a little bit deeper because I want this to be a deeper groove than that and a deeper bead. So there we go. The nice thing about it is it makes a very detailed edge. It makes a nice connection between this side and that side so you can get some really sharp, nice details. So I've got my bead about the way I want it. I want to come over this side here and just scrape it a little bit more. And remember, keep it trailing. If you bring it up like I was just getting ready to do, you'll get a catch. So that looks good. I'm going to go over here and do this bead. And once I get this one done, then we're going to cut a bit of a cove in between them to make them match up. Um, one thing I have on there, detail. Let's see if I can do it here. I'm going to come in here. There's a little bit of shadows. But I'm coming in straight and I'm going to intersect with the bead right there and I made that flat line, right? I want to save that flat line right there because it gives me a detail when I go around. The one I'm talking about is this little detail right here with the, see the flat, so it delineates from the bead to the flat, then we do the cove. So I'm going to do that on both ends and then we're going to do that part. Well now we're ready to make the cove. You can see I've got my beads formed and one important thing when you're making the beads Make sure this intersection here and here is perfectly clean. No tool marks, no nothing, because this is end grain and you can't sand that out. You can, but you'd be here about six hours, so it's no fun. So using that point tool, you can get a really beautiful edge on that. Now I'm going to turn this on and we're going to use our round tipped easy wood tool here. And we're going to just come in like this and start making a cove. And we've got a little bit of vibration going on. So let me just double check one thing while I've got this here. Stop it. I'm gonna lock the headstock in just a tick. Sometimes, there, you can get, it can come loose just a little bit. It doesn't always happen. It doesn't usually happen, but it did this time. I must have done something. So anyway, I'm gonna come here and just keep making a little cove here, and I'm going from high to low. And what I want to wind up doing is coming from low to high to get the cleanest cut because the, end, the grain is aiming this way. So if I come out like this, I'm pushing against the other grains like my fingers there. So that gives it support and it doesn't look bad, doesn't tear out. So that's why it, it, it vibrates when I go in because I'm going against the grain. Now listen how quiet it is when I come back up. See, it's a little nicer coming back up with the cut. But you got to move some wood to start off with so you can get a little noise. So we'll just take some of it out here. Look at me, look at my camera. Yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> when the camera's in the way, you can't see the wood too well. So now I'm gonna start coming out this way. And let's see, I've got a ways to go down on this because I've got that one line way down in there. I forgot about that. So we've got to bring out a lot of wood. Let's take out some more here. There we go. Now it's looking good. And you want to make a light cut when you do this because if you take a big cut, you will be tearing grain out. And again, you don't want to be sanding on this all day either. So that's looking really, really nice. So I'm going to sand all this up and then we're going to go over to the drill press. 
Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.